Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to the homestead and welcome to my channel. Today, it is cold outside. Uh, but we're going to do something that needs to be done. And uh, as one of the ways to try to get up and get back moving and things again. Instead of basically sitting in my recliner waiting to die kind of. <laughs> Uh, theology going on, even though that's not quite right. I just, I've been so sick. I've just been sitting in my chair all the time. Um, but one of the best ways to get feeling better is to get up and start moving, get that blood circulating, the lungs getting good air coming in, and uh, things like that. Um, so I figured today would be a good day to clean out my shed. Um, and of course I don't expect to get it all done. Um, we'll see how much I can get done. Um, because yeah, I don't have a lot of energy and, uh, you know, I've been sitting in my chair basically almost completely for the last two weeks. I haven't gotten up much, um, just because I've been so sick. Um, but I need to get moving. Um, it's been put on my heart that I need to get moving, um, and that's one of the ways I'm going to help myself get over whatever is weighing me down. So, um, yeah, so I'm out here in my greenhouse, and yes, this is a cattle panel greenhouse, um, and I will put a link above um, for the video uh, playlist, uh, it's a short video playlist, on the demo and rebuilding of this greenhouse um, because I used to have a greenhouse, an actual greenhouse uh, from Harbor Freight that we got years ago, years, years, years ago. And it was time to uh, demo that and then uh, build this thing now. And here in Michigan, it's more of a, well, they call them like a high tunnel kind of greenhouse um, instead of an actual greenhouse greenhouse because um, the temperature in here is a balmy um, 40 degrees maybe. I don't see my thermometer right offhand. No, I don't see it. Um, if I can find it when I'm cleaning up this madness, I'll update you guys on the temperature in here. Let me see. Um, well, it's warm enough that uh, there is no ice on my water uh, tank that's in here. Um, but yeah, so again, I'm going to clean out the clutter, clean this up, get it ready for the spring, which is only a couple months away. Kind of crazy. Um, I'm going to show you the before, and then I'm going to stop a couple times along the way and show you the... Um, progress. Uh, I can't do a video as I'm going through because it's so cold. Uh, cameras don't do well in the cold. Batteries don't do well in the cold. So I can't like have a live feed kind of uh, video of this work in progress. So I'll have to just show you as we go along what it looks like. So I'm going to flip you guys around. I'm going to show you the before. It's quite a mess in here, but uh, you know, when you're trying to brace for uh, the fall storms and you need to get everything where it's not going to blow away and be buried by snow and stuff, you kind of just start throwing stuff in. If you know what I mean, if you're getting ready for a storm, you try to throw things in uh, where they're not going to get blown around and destroyed. So that's kind of what happened in here. <laughs> All right. So enough chat. Let's get working. So this is the before footage. You see, got lots of stuff kind of thrown in here. I have my pot of lettuce there. I do have a heat lamp over it because, like I said, um, this is more of a high tunnel um, than a greenhouse here in Central Michigan, just because we get so so cold, and this uh, greenhouse is so small that there's not a way to really have good. Uh, way to have heat retention and thermal uh, 
the thermodynamic to keep a greenhouse warm. Um, it doesn't function on its own. So without putting like an oil heater or something that, that um, provides artificial heat right now, uh, that, that heat lamp is about all I got going. So, yeah, so this is kind of a mess. It's got a lot of potential. This is kind of, uh, what do you call it, a row cover within my greenhouse. I have some uh, buckets under here that uh, don't do well getting completely frozen. I have thyme and, oh, it looks like I had some mustard in here. Um, I can see it. I don't think the camera can pick it up right now. Uh, because of the plastic, but I had some mustard in there. Looks like the mustard got killed by the cold. But this was just a way to prevent the uh, things that are underneath here from getting completely frozen uh, and completely killing them off. I guess some um, varieties of thyme are not perennial um, because they're not cold hardy enough for our zone. So I've been trying to keep it alive by keeping it double greenhoused here and we'll see if that works come spring it's kind of the same as this pot over here this is blue daisy you can see it's still still green it's still alive blue daisies uh i guess the daisies are perennials but here in zone 5b um they're considered a tender annual same as rosemary and some other things that are perennials in warmer climates they're considered tender annuals here because they don't survive the freezing cold temperatures. And then of course we got the kale. This stuff I brought in from the fall. I had this in my raised uh, garden bed area, my container beds, and I brought them in here so I could harvest them throughout the winter. You see they're still alive. <clears throat> they're growing slowly. I mean you see the brand new leaves. But because it's so cold, it, they just grow re really, really slow. Um, but it's all good. All right, so I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to put my gloves on because, like I said, it's a balmy 30-some degrees out here. Let me see if I can pull it up to what the temperature actually is. No, I can't at the moment. Um, but we're going to get rocking and rolling, get this place cleaned up and more organized. This guy actually has to go over where that window is. And right now, it ain't going there. <laughs> All right, I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. Let's see how much we can get done. All right, so this is what it's looking like so far. I got most of the stuff out that actually needs to be moved out. Um, some of the other stuff is not moving. The pots under here aren't moving because they need to stay protected anyway. And then that uh, container of soil, I don't think I can move it right now because it's a little heavy. I might have my husband move it later. Um, and then some peat moss on the top. But, uh, yeah, most of it's moved out. Now i got to clean up the, the floor, um, get a trash bag out here, and clean up some of my milk jugs that have disintegrated. This is what uh, years of use does to milk jugs. Um, you know, I, I use the winter sowing seed starting method and I use milk jugs and usually, um, depending on the quality of the plastic, I get about two to three years. Then after that, the plastic disintegrates. And as you can see, it's disintegrated into quite a, quite a mess, but I got those to pick up. I have some, uh, plant markers and things, lots of plant markers on the, on the ground. I'm not going to do a complete 100% like sweeping and making this immaculate. I don't have the energy and this is a greenhouse, so it's going to be dirty. But I'm going to pick up what needs to be picked up and get this a little bit tidy. Let me show you all the stuff that I just got out of the greenhouse. It's quite amazing how much stuff I had in here. All right. So these are some of the bins. You can see... These are my old milk jugs that are starting to deteriorate. Why do I have still have them? Because some of them have soil in it. And this is expensive soil that I use. I use like Happy Frog or Pro Mix. That stuff is expensive. Good quality stuff, but it's not stuff that you just dump out and, you know, I reuse it year after year for my milk jugs. So that's why they're still there. And then my trash bin that's obviously full. Um, but let me pan you around. Here's this 
this thing that needs to go in another uh, spot in the greenhouse now that we got cleaned out. I have buckets, storage containers, some compost. Those didn't come out of the greenhouse. Those there. Those always have been where we stored our... I use those for our row covers. Those are half inch PVC pipes. Anyways, continuing on. More containers. I have lots of milk crates that I've used to store various uh, seedling uh, trays, pots, you name it. So I got lots of this stuff. Lots of this stuff. And then we'll pan around here. Some more bins with more milk jugs. These ones should be reusable. And then I keep uh, landscaping flags because I mark my perennials and stuff in the garden. And I'll show you that a little bit later so you can see what I do with, with these uh, utility flags. But anyway, the chair did not come out of the greenhouse. I'm hoping to be able to put it in the greenhouse though. So I have a spot to actually sit in the greenhouse and do some reading or just be in the greenhouse when it rains or something like that. But anyway, and then some more containers with more seed starting stuff. So yeah, this, all this stuff was crammed into the greenhouse. So again, I'm gonna go get a grocery bag or um, gonna get a garbage bag and get this cleaned up a little bit more. And then we're gonna start uh, putting some stuff back here, uh, in here and organize as we go so it's not such a disaster and it's something I can work with in the spring. So I'll bring you back here when I do a little bit more work. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you what I use the utility flags for. I have my roses right here marked with them because when they die back, it's very hard to see them. Um, and then when I have perennials out front, and I'll show you those, they die completely back to the ground and stuff. And so it's like hard to know where they are. But that's what I use utility flags for. All right, so we're at the front flower bed. Uh, I'll show you quickly. You see the flags there marking the different perennials. Um, and when, like I said, when some of them die back, um, you can't really tell where they are, especially if we actually get heavy snowfall and stuff like that, and you're cleaning up the beds and whatever. Um, it's hard to see where the actual new perennials are coming up. So um, that's why I mark them. All right, guys. I'm tired, but I feel very accomplished. Um, I'm finished for right now for probably the day. I've got a bulk of what I want done, done. So yay, uh, praise the Lord, because I can't do this on my own. Um, so let's see what the progress is, eh? All right, here is the progress. I got my chair in here. <laughs> So I have things a lot more organized in here. Um, as a professional gardener, you know I'm still small time. <laughs> I have lots of flats and containers that I grow seedlings in and things like that. So they're just everywhere. So they're reorganized again. I still got my, my potting area. That's what this little bench is here. It's my potting area. And right now it's full of all the different plant tags and stuff I found on the ground and in various places. I'll go through that another day, but hey, they're all right there, so I can do that. I was able to move the soil. It wasn't as full as I thought it was, and since it dried out, it was quite light. So thankful for that. So the soil's in here. Got the compost back in here. Peat moss is in the back on that bottom shelf there. Stacked up my milk crates, so they're ready to go. Um, I use them for sitting pots and stuff up off the ground a lot of times uh, or covering plants that are very vulnerable to being dug up or peed on or whatever, uh, especially new plants of the year. So I use these things all the time. I'm always looking for more. But yeah, they're organized now. So I still have this crate back here that I've got to go through when it warms up a little bit more. I've already gone through some um, with... Uh, these broken milk jugs that have soil in them. I've already gone through some, but 
still have some left to do but another day another day now let me show you the outside all right so this is basically my trash pile everything that i'm getting rid of and uh getting rid of a lot of the tiny cell packs those ones are the 72s i think is what they are and for me they just don't work they're too small too small and they're really old so i'm just chucking them um, but yeah i got all this here not the pot but this is all trash here and then my my bigger pots in my uh five gallon buckets will just stay out here this will probably take up to the porch um what's salvageable otherwise the rest will get thrown out because i don't need them in my greenhouse right now um i have no purpose for them they just take up space so uh, my husband's supposed to be building me a garden shed eventually so i'll be able to put those in there because i use them uh, when i winter so when it gets warmer and the jugs need to be watered i'll use these bins fill them about uh one inch up with water set my jugs in there and let them saturate from the bottom up which is actually one of the better ways to water your plants but right now they just take up space in the greenhouse so these have been sitting here for a long time these are all my potted uh, or my hanging baskets have gotten through the years. Some of them are salvageable, and I'll deal with that in the spring. Um, other ones, that are going to go in the trash. So, you can see most of this pile is gone. I've got some bins here that some of them were in the greenhouse. And again, because I cleaned out everything, um, these are all cleaned out. So they're going to go up on the porch, most likely too. And then I have this mess here. This will go into the scrap bin. Um, I love the, the fence, the metal fencing. It's cute, and sometimes it's cheaper than getting other types of fencing. Um, but when you have animals that just destroy it, or you try to pull it up and move it, it just, it's a mess. So that is going to go in the scrap bin. Um, you know, as a gardener, we tend to hoard things. Because we think, oh, we'll use this in the garden, or hey, we'll use that in the garden, and yeah. <laughs> Like all these timbers down here, uh, they're eventually going to get hauled over to the burn pit. Um, but, you know, it's time to let things go and just focus on what you're actually going to use. Not what you think you're going to use. And then all this stuff here is gone. It's been reorganized back into the greenhouse. All right, so that's what's going on today. I got quite a bit done. I'm so thankful. Uh, so I'm going to close up the greenhouse, uh, take the trash out uh, to where it can be put out um, when it's trash day. And uh, go uh, probably drink a nice hot cup of herbal tea and uh, just reflect and be thankful for what I got done today. So thank you so much for following me along today. I hope it was an inspiration if you're struggling to get up out there. Go do something, get your blood pumping, your heart pumping, your, your lungs working, and try to get some fresh air to help flush the crud out of your system so you start feeling better. That's my goal, and I hope it's yours too. So, until next time, I hope wherever you are, you're wonderfully blessed. Take care. Bye-bye.